Hello dear students and welcome to the lesson about linear functions. Let's look at linear functions using an example. Here you see a mountain in front of you in cross section. Let's label this mountain with a width at the bottom and a height to the side. That means we could measure the height from the side. And measure the width from the bottom of the mountain. Now imagine that we are positioning ourselves somewhere on this mountain, for example, we stand here and want to know how high we are and how far from the point of origin here below. For this purpose, we label the two axes width and height. When we stand here we ask ourselves, how can we describe our position? We can pull down a line to measure it. That means we hit the 15. And then to the left to the height axis we also draw a line. We come across the 5. To make it clearer, I will remove these trees and the soil so that we can only see the one line here, the ground surface. Now it's a little clearer. And we mark our point here in the middle where we stand, just with a big P. To describe our position, where we are right on the mountain, we can call this point P and find the width and the height. And we can even do it concretely because we can read the width from this line, which is at 15. And then read the height from this line, which is at 5. This is definitely easy. But what happens if, for example, I put a dot here where my mouse cursor is? Then it would be somewhere in between and we could not read it directly. Therefore, we need a different description, not the graph, but one in the form of an equation where we use a numeric value, a width, and then automatically calculate the height by a formula. Let's take a look at that. We make our graph smaller, so we have a bit more space. The question that arises for us now. Can one directly determine any point without reading from the graph? We want to answer this question. We now clarify and first of all give ourselves a table of values. Left is the width, right is the height. Let's enter a few values. If we have the width at 0, here below, where the mouse pointer is, we also have a height of 0. So we can enter it as so. However, if we are at a width of 15, we follow the line, we obviously have a height of 5. And at a width of 30 we have a height of 10. Unfortunately this is not so easy to recognize since we didn't draw farther, but we can add these lines to make it more readable. So we take three points that are easy to read. So now, how do I get from this 0 up here to this 0? How do I get from this 15 to this 5? And how do I get from this 30 to this 10? There must be a connection, and we want to find it now. So we want to find a formula or a function, denoted by f, which if we insert the width, f of width, gives us a height. So that means we want to get the function value, which in our case is the height, from a given width. We can also say that if the width were x, then the height would be y. Looking at our table, that means if I set the width to 0, then what's the height? The height is 0. If I use the width 15, we get a height of 5. And if I use the width 30, the height comes out as 10. And really this is just another illustration of our existing table. Down here we can split this part up. The function value of the width 0 must be equal to 0, for any formula. The function value at 15, i.e. at a width of 15, must be equal to something which is equal to 5. 
and the function value at 30, that is, the height at a given width of 30, is something, which is equal to 10. And this something here in the middle, we are about to find now. Let's look at the differences that arise when I jump from a width of 0 to 15. And when I jump from a height of 0 to 5. From 0 to 15 that's plus 15, and we jump from 0 to 5 with plus 5. So if I go the 15 steps to the right at the graph here, 5, 10, 15, I have to go 5 steps at the same time. 5 high. That means that there is an uphill slope. Obviously the slope influences our function and its course. Let us briefly modify our example here, reduce it a little and enlarge it a bit. Now, when we look at the slope, we just look at this triangle here. That means we look at this line. We look at this line. And we look at this line. The other dotted line we can ignore at first. Then here we have the height of the triangle. And here we have the width of the triangle. Now I will tell you that the slope is the height divided by the width. Then we can use these values as an example, then we have for the height 5 and for the width 15. And from calculating fractions, you know 5 divided by 15 is a third. So that means the slope on this line here is one third. In other words, we are going three steps to the right, here shown in blue, and one step up. Three steps to the right again, one step up. Three steps to the right, one to the top. And so on and so on, finally arriving at 15 and 5. Now the question is, how do we find a description, or formula for it? Let's look at how we can directly analyze the graph with the value of the slope. So now if we take any width and put it into our formula by multiplying it by one-third. Theoretically our graph should give the same result. Let's test it. Let's take a width of 5. Then we have 1 third times 5 equals 5 thirds, which is around 1.667. And it would be really hard to read this value here on the left, but now we can just add it. So now I can use any value here and multiply by a third and get out the height on the left side. And what happens if I change that one third, then what about our graph and function? Let's write 2 instead of one third x. That would mean, if I put a 5 in here, then we get 2 times 5, and that gives a height of 10. If our function is 2x, then now I can go up at this 5 and 10 and set a point there. And connect it to the 0, 0 point. That would be a very steep function. An easier function is if f of x is 1x. Then if I put in 5 here, we get 1 times 5, and that's 5. And then we look at it, that goes through the point 5, 5, and continues upwards. And as you may see, for a function of 1x, the value on the right side always comes out the same as the input. So the width is always the same as the height. That's why we have an ideal slope of 1. In the next lesson, I will show you how we can determine that formula or function for any linear graph in a coordinate system.